Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you how to do mid-year discounting of cash flows using NPV function. In other words, I'm going to show you how to compute the NPV where we expect the cash flows to occur in the middle of a year rather than at the end of the year. To compute NPV of a project, what we do is we sum up the present value of cash flows of each of the year or the time period. And to get the present value, what we do is take the cash flow of each year divided by 1 plus expected rate of return and raise it to the power number of years. So we could do cell by cell and then sum up. Instead, we have the NPV function, which makes it far more easier for us, where all we have to do is NPV open the brackets, give the discount rate and then select all the cash flows. But the NPV function assumes that each of the cash flow occurs at the end of the period that we have mentioned. So end of first, second, third year and fourth, fifth year. What if we were to assume that the cash flow is occurring in the middle of the year? Because in a corporate finance or project finance context, cash flows occur all through the year. So expecting it to occur at an end is probably not right. So we take midpoint as the average time for the cash flows. If we are doing cash flow by cash flow, one of the things we could do is change the value of N. Instead of n being 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, we could make it as 0 0.5, 1.5, 2.5 and so on. But if you're using NPV function, this can also be achieved directly. So do the NPV function. Then when you get the final answer, multiply it with 1 plus the expected rate of return raised to the power 0 0.5. And you could see that also gives the same answer as doing it cell by cell. The logic or the mathematics behind this formula is fairly simple. Our NPV function is discounting all the cash flows, assuming it to occur at the end of the year, whereas we wanted to assume the cash flows occur in the middle of the year. So the NPV function is discounting by an additional half year. All the cash flows are getting discounted by an additional half year period. So to offset this additional discounting, I'm going to compound it for half year period. That's what I'm doing here. So I'm taking the NPV function multiplying it with 1 plus the expected return raised to the power 0.5. In fact, how do I set this up in my model? Because generally I don't like to type static numbers inside a cell. So what I do is I set up a separate line here or a separate row where I'm going to take an input for the cash flow type where 0 would mean cash flows are occurring at the end of the period, 0.5 means it's at the mid and 1 means it's at the beginning. So in this case, I'll type 0.5 here. And all I'm going to do is simply link it to that cell. If the cash flows are occurring at the beginning rather than at the end, then I should be compounding it for one full year. And all I have to do is put the CF type as one and we get our answer. If it's at the end, change it to zero. Now zero for end and one for beginning is consistent with the type argument we have for all the other financial functions such as PV, PMT, FV and so on. But in case, uh, if you want, or if you find it a little counterintuitive, you think, you know, zero is now and one is at the end. Therefore, where we are saying zero for end and one for beginning sounds a little counterintuitive. So what you could do is set up another row or another cell where we're going to put the CF timing. So in this case, I'm going to put it as, let's say, if I were to say it's cash flow is going to occur now, I'm going to put it as zero. And if it's going to be at the end, I'm going to put it as one. And the CF type is going to be a formula cell. It's just simply going to be one minus the CF timing. So the CF timing, I could put it as zero for now. In that case, my cash flow type becomes one and cash flow is getting computed for one full year. If it's mid type 0.5 and if it's at the end type one, we have our answers and we have a model which is fairly dynamic and you could let the end user choose what they want to assume as the timing of the cash flows. Before I end this video, I'm going to also tell you what not to do to do mid-year discounting. Sometimes what people do is, in order to do a mid-year discounting, you have a separate argument or separate field where you take the mid-year dates. And after taking the mid-year dates, we use XIRR function or XNPV, I'm sorry. XNPV, the select the discount rate, then select the cash flows and select the dates. This is a wrong approach because the XNPV function always gives present value as on the first date that is there in our media date column. So here the first date is 30th June. So this is giving me net present value as of 30th June. 
I want the valuation date to be 31st December 23, not 30th June 24. That is why we notice that the XNPV answer here is not accurate. And therefore, I would recommend not to use this. I hope you found the video useful. If you like the video, do click on the like button, uh, do subscribe to our channel and also please share the video with your colleagues and friends who may find it useful. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.